All right, y'all, so we have the true final impressions of Dragon's Dogma 2 from IGN. So um, by the time you watch this video, <laughs> you'll probably would have seen my uh, cre my character creation and storage playthrough, which, I'm just, which is just creating your character in your main pawn. You'll probably have seen that already. And my other review and my other reaction with uh, Maximilian Dude's gameplay. So, um... Yeah, this this is just gonna finish it out. We definitely gonna be playing this game. So let me stop yapping and let me get to the video. I wasn't sure what to expect from Dragon's Dogma 2. I have Dark Arisen in my Steam library and a paltry 70 minutes of game time <laughs> that is likely going to increase in the coming weeks. Right. But while I may be inexperienced compared to those already aware of Dogma's greatness, I can safely say that my preview session broke my hype meter. I cannot wait to play more. Mm. He talking real good about the game. I mean, it... This might be one of the After ones. dropped into a random save that started me in the middle of a town with a mystic spearhand vocation, I wasn't really sure where to go. But that was the beauty of this demo. Dragon's Dogma 2 organically gave me plenty of options for what to do next, and there's no wrong answer when it comes to how you want to play this game. I was almost immediately greeted by a traveler asking me to find their orb, because if it wasn't found, his master could have him killed. That jewel was my last hope. Morris, a shopkeeper, told me that his grandson Raj had gone missing and a villager informed me that he was dragged off by wolves. When I started talking to people in town, I met folks who told me about a town that was overrun with fell beasts. All of these options were there to pursue in addition to the main storyline. Yeah, none of these are even the main quest. And mm -hmm. while I was probably supposed to do the main quest during my demo time, I decided to go it alone, jumping on an ox cart to the next town to see what else I could discover. That's the point. Dragon's Dogma 2 really clicked with me because you need to constantly be on your toes. There are moments of downtime where you can just enjoy the vista or pose with a random ogre you've defeated. Wait, he's not dead? But more often than not, I was organically finding combat encounters and secrets that I wanted to investigate more and that amazing loop was consistent as I made my journey back to town. Over the course of 80 minutes, I fought a griffin that flew me into the air and dropped huh. me to my death. Oh, sh that's tough. I discovered the untimely fate of Raj was affected by the fact that I decided to run off exploring the wilderness. How unfortunate. A completely different outcome than what Mitchell encountered during his IGN first playthrough a couple months ago. I took mm. on an ogre that was protecting a treasure chest my pawn had oh, led hell me to. No. Yeah, he uh, he sat he on me. Butt I turned you. down new pawns that I had met who wanted to become a part of my crew. I was ambushed by a group of bandits making camp, and all of this happened organically while I just explored this small sliver of a massive map. Sheesh. Even though I was probably supposed to do that main quest. Dragon's Dogma 2 had just provided me with a wealth of entertainment that I didn't want to walk away from while wandering Same. around accomplishing nothing related to the main quest at all. I still think that they should have had the, the, the beast. Here's one example. I had a capturable. fight with this griffin earlier. Now, while trying to hunt him down for round two, I've come upon its nest. I leap into action with flawless skill. And it would seem I'm taking this fight on a little early because it starts at daytime and goes until the game cycles to nighttime. I ended up winning, but it took almost all of my resources. Big XP. Big and I XP had though. So and a level much up. fun doing this. Now, the Mystic Spearhand vocation was interesting, but as it was my first time playing Dragon's Dogma 2, I wasn't able to showcase all of the abilities. Still, the of focus course. of the provided build was clearly all about the spear and your character's ability to teleport to foes and deliver devastating blows. Yeah, that class looks fire. The recent vocation trailer also teased a Mystic wealth Spearhand, of exciting yeah. options, like the ability to teleport directly on top of enemies before plunging your spear into their back, and then ability that teleports between status afflicted foes to Ooh. deliver a crushing blow. Getting to see what was possible just makes me want to go back and play even more. And if this Stop. isn't to your liking, Dragon's Dogma 2 has other vocations available. They include the fighter. That's that's what I picked. That's what I made. Mage. 
thief. That's what I mean by main pawn thief. Warrior. Source work. Mystic spear hand. Magic archer. Warfare, which is sort of a jack of all trades. Hold on, that, that one. That one might be the one for me. A little bit of everything. I like that. And Trickster, which we showed off as part of our yeah, IGN first cool. coverage. You are Trickster free to switch cool. between each of these on the fly by simply talking to a vendor and taking a peek at the options available makes it clear that each has a lot more depth than expected. The second vocation I had the chance to try was the Magic Archer. Diving into the combat options, the sheer amount of choices at your disposal is incredibly exciting. My Archer had nine weapon skills to choose from with Flame Fang Arrow, Ricochet Hunter, Frost Hunter Bolt and Recovery Arrow selected. Flame Fang Arrow, at least in the build I played, seems incredibly overpowered. Well, now we got the scoop. That's going to be but the meta. Anyway, when the time came to jump over to play the second vocation, I began by being ambushed in a tavern town. Boy, what's your problem? Only to make quick work of my opponent by stun locking them with Ricochet Hunter and Frost Hunter Bolt. It was an incredibly powerful combination, so powerful that the Griffin we encountered never stood a chance. In hindsight, I could have started Griffin this is strong, a damn. better. Flame Fang Arrow simply devastated everything with ease. While doing a quest that took me into the mines to collect materials, I was blindsided by this thing. Oh, hell no. Did you see his eyes blowing red? Well, you didn't like see that when you walked job. in? I fire ricochet arrow and ice. You didn't see them glowing red eyes when you walked into the cave, bro? You gotta keep your head on the swivel. With ease. While doing a quest. You didn't see them glowing red eyes. <laughs> gotta keep your head on the swivel, gangy. Air ricochet arrow and ice arrows at the opponent, as well as the very powerful flame fang arrow. Encounters like this and the Griffin encounter before really demonstrate up, how powerful the correct pawns are when paired with a good vocation. It also did a great job to break up what I thought was a mission to collect rocks. This was constant throughout my playthrough, and I love how the game just keeps you on your toes all the time. Well, the gameplay was amazing, and I can't wait to get back to play more. There was one concern I've seen the community curious about, and that's okay. the uncapped frame rate on console. When looking at this, it should be noted that I am playing a version which Capcom clearly states is still in development, and it's not equivalent to the final product. But in this build on PlayStation 5, Dragon's Dogma 2 was averaging around 31 frames per second, with dips during heavy combat moments while playing with the PS5 set to output at 4K. I did not get to test at lower base resolutions mm. or with variable refresh rate turned on during my time to see if that had a positive impact on performance. However, if I had one hope, it would be that Capcom added more options in the frame rate department, including at minimum a capped 30 frames per second mode on console. That said, the gameplay was so fun that it was hard to walk away focused on anything other than my genuine excitement to play more. And as someone that primarily plays on PC, the frame this rate game, this game could use the variable, the variable frame rate. Like what is it called? A D D L S S or something or whatever it's called that variable frame rate shit, because you could, as long as you keep the combat smooth, you could take out some of the textures here in the back and focus everything to the fight because that's where you're looking at. I don't know. That, that could be something. I don't know if that's... I, I, that's possible on consoles, I believe. It didn't bother me that much because the gameplay is that fun. But I'm, I'm definitely going to play on my PC. My demo ended in the dead of night trying to help a character navigate the spirits, zombies, and monsters waiting for me in the darkness. But after playing almost two and a half hours, there's no denying that Dragon's Dogma 2 had me hooked. I cannot wait to play he, more <laughs> on March 22nd. He if you want, want to, call to see off the more game. about Dragon's Dogma 2, be sure to check out our IGN first coverage. And for more on all things gaming, keep it right here on IGN. He ain't even want to come off the game, I could tell. He was like, damn, like, I got to stop playing, bro. Yeah, that, that just got me even more excited for the game. Like, I saw, um, I don't know if you guys watched my other reaction. I'll probably link it here. So, Maximilian playing. He was he was facing some lizards. 
he ran and he was ran into like a dark path on the way to this town and he was fighting some lizards and it was getting overwhelmed so you had to retreat so nearby was a town so he retreated into the town the lizards followed him into the town and the townspeople started popping off everybody woke up out their sleep they got they got up from the bar got up from what was watching their clothes or gathering water from the well and pulled out their swords and just started wowing and they said this, and they helped them defeat the lizard i thought that was so cool because usually when that happens in games it's either like it's a glitch the enemy can't come into the town or the enemy are coming to the town fucking everything up and the villagers all these warriors all this armor on just standing there and the villagers is like ah like but they really popped off like they the, the villagers really got up put the armor on came out the bar came out the crib with their swords and just started started wilding and they defeated the was with lizard people i think that was just so cool I would love to capture a moment like that on, on stream while I'm playing. So, yeah, definitely hyped for this game. Definitely going to be playing this game. I'll probably play this one first because Rise of Ronin, Rise of the Ronin also comes out the same day. So, I'll probably, I'll probably play this first and then play Rise of Ronin. So, you yeah, expect that on the channel, right? So, y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comments. Let me know if y'all going to cop this or whatever. So, y'all already know the vibes. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. It's your boy Just Falls. We out. One. Thank you.